Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing. What do you mean vanished? They just vanished. They're just gone. Disappeared. Like camouflage? See, I, got, I, got, I got a theory on this. I think the human eye sees a what? 30 frames per second? Something like that. Right? So these things, I think, they have the capability of, you know, moving at the speed of or the vibrations of, like, what was one under whatever the Hobbit was shot at. That's what, so they can just, they quickly just change their, you know, their frames per second. Boom. They're disappeared, right? Like they're vibrating too fast for us to even know. You either see them or like you can't see them. Or if you do see them, you just have a seizure and it's fucking over. <laughs> it's just yeah. way too fast for your brain to comprehend. And when you see them, you're like, they're moving just unnatural. It seems too yeah, weird. weird. Hobbits so they, shouldn't move like this. <laughs> so they just can instantly go from visible frame rate to yeah. hyper frame rate. And then or you just can't see maybe them. that's what the... You mean like they kicked up the gearbox, right? Like or, uh, their little droid there, and that's what it was stirring up, right? So it's he, like he it powers just, up. Maybe that's a bit of a coincidence that the kids screaming them attention the gaze is exactly when it get they get you know powered up for cloaking or whatever. And yeah, so it, it might have been some type of cloaking device, or perhaps uh, you know, yeah, maybe they jacked up the frames, but it only it only was effective for a few minutes because after those few minutes. <laughs> You like ship, they think they the, the entire group came back. <laughs> right. Wait, they, the, the entire so group came back. So obviously their their cloaking devices are malfunctioning. Like they're not working properly. Maybe. Well, there, how many right? minutes? But that's why they're surprised that they saw them to begin with. And then initially, then finally they do kick in. And then, you know, not for long enough, there's a problem. So the they get off the ship. The fucked. They get off the ship. They're thinking, oh, these fuckers can't see us. We got our, we got, good. we have the right frequency. They can't see us. Then when they realize their little droid kicks it up a notch. They disappear, but what interferes? Why do they come back then? If they reappear just, just a few uh, just a few minutes later, right? Like five minutes later. It's fucking yeah. dicked. Well, they come back and the, the kids are still there, and then one of the one of the creatures uh, is holding what seem is described as just this four foot long straight tube. It's holding Fuck. this tube, and it points this instrument. <laughs> it points this instrument at the uh, the sixteen year old boy oh, who had made everyone the noise. cover your ears. <laughs> trigger what? warning. Trigger warning. <laughs> and You're the boy next. <laughs> vanished. Oh, okay, the thank kid God. Vanished? The report. Oh, thank yeah. God. I thought I was going somewhere darker than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, so he fucking piped the kid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, piped him. So All now right. the kid's gone. This just turned this just turned into the fucking world's scariest pop up magic show. Yeah. The kid's <laughs> fucking gone. Yeah, it's like Tommy Knockers. That's and the uh, so the kid the kid disappears, uh, and then apparently the aliens. The crowd, hey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, the little fucking box guys like doing a little break yeah. dance, kind of. They're going doing the little around. Russian jig. Yeah. I was just a Boney M concert. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so uh, the the aliens and their robot apparently re-entered their craft. And the ship left after they had this boy. And then once the, the craft started accelerating away, the boy who had disappeared reappeared. I wonder, oh, like, shit. It's, see, that's weird to me. I remember reading that and I'm like, I'm wondering if this is just some way of like incapacitating this kid for I don't know what they do to him to make him disappear. And then it, like they send him to the fucking phantom zone. Yeah. And then when they just so they can make an, like a safe getaway because. Maybe they interpreted his like screams as like a battle cry or like, you know, like <laughs> oh, I who knows, shit. Right? Well, like, yeah. oh, they're probably, they're yeah. just as scared, right? They're and probably like, oh, account, fuck, like, they're more scared of us than pipe we are this of fucking them. kid. <laughs> yeah, but don't Trank they, him. like the, the, and some of the people like some of the like the accounts are that briefly before he vanished, he like froze unnaturally, as if he like getting this tube Freeze pointed frame. at him, froze him in place. And then right after freezing, they were like, what? It, gone. He disappeared. So it's like, oh, it's fucking weird. Right? Terrible. No puff, no puff of smoke. Just gone. It's interesting because, yeah. like, we, I've, we've we talked about this in the past. I'm going to fucking butcher it. But I remember like, there's, like, that theory where, like, maybe these other civilizations, they're not as, like, warmongering as we are. Right? So maybe they don't have any weapons of self-defense. Maybe, like, they're, they only have peaceful ta tactics of, like, disarming people. Because they only right? carry like, so that's all they have is this fucking pipe. They only carry less or, lethal, or they're like super back. Like this is like West Side Story or whatever. Where that's that they got like knives and broken bottles and chains. <laughs> like they don't have yeah. switchblades. Yeah, 
Uh, it, also, it's like <laughs> I was thinking. I was like too. Like when I was thinking about this, is like because by all accounts, when they first come out, they're paying no like mind to the people watching. Like they're more interested in the ground, the dirt, the soil samples, and stuff. And like, I wonder if these things are just looking up at here and been like, "Here's some more monkeys, right? Like here, here's some more, like another species of uh, of monkey." And they're like, "Hey, all these uh, weird other hairless monkeys keep coming around us here." Hey, monkeys. Now what's screaming? <laughs> monkeys are monkeys terrifying. Are scary. Like if right? they know about monkeys, monkeys are fucking scary. Yeah. Even worse, we're apes. We don't have tails. That's even scarier. Yeah. Right. So, but right? like, we're we're very much similar. We're territorial, right? We. <laughs> We join a pack, so it's like maybe we're biclopses. Maybe we're biclops. Hey, there's a fucking just more biclopses. We're right? No more, they're like, oh, yeah, they're like this whole world biclopses. <laughs> yeah, these guys don't even have three <laughs> eyes. <laughs> they don't, that's they're their fucking... that's their their level of intelligence is the number of eyes. So like, biclopses. we have the we have the Kardashev scale, you know, like type zero, one, two, three, <laughs> and they just go by yeah, type, yeah. types the of clops, eyes. The clops, the clops scale. scale. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, it adds up. But either way, I like I kind of thought I was like m maybe they just didn't care until the kids started screaming, and they're like, "All right, this is like we just don't want any issues." So they just take care of this kid for a second. But like where he goes, how long he's gone, how long? It's interesting because I'm like he's not gone for very long, but like some people said like five minutes. I'm like that's a long time to be gone if you're not liking where you're going. It's right? a fucking lifetime. Yeah, five minutes in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, never be the same. Well, and, and that's the that's the other thing is like we don't exactly know what kind of technology these things have, w what exactly they're doing. So it's like, was he actually gone for five minutes, or for him, was he gone for like you know a couple hours? Was that a little time dilation? Well, he style. comes back yeah. with a beard and shit. Yeah, comes back as <laughs> deep. Fucking, I met this yeah. guy named Zod. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty and cool. A lot of PTSD. <laughs> he had a lot of a lot of crazy ideas, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, it's probably pretty similar to the current state of Russia. Yeah, I see eye to eye here. Uh, yeah, so that that ended the the in the article, like I would say, I wrote uh, in September. Like that ended in the article of of what had happened. Like it was a, a, a mostly based on the interviews with the two boys, or actually that that article apparently had gotten most of the details from the boys' mothers, uh, is who uh, Mosulov said that he spoke to before he wrote that article um but then at following that there is an entire scientific investigation so we get uh, that too um, well just before we just before we get into that i just want to make the point too it's like when the boy reappeared a lot of people say it it was like he never left so when he reappeared and unfroze it was like he, he was just kept like, screaming he's he like ah, he disappeared ah, mid-scream and ah, he came back screaming. He's, yeah he's just looking ah yeah, looking around everyone's kind of it's awkward now at this point uh, but before so they, the, we get into that, Zell, you want to take a quick beer break? I'm empty. Let's refill, grab a Let's... quick beer. We'll be right back. Now, any good UFO encounter uh, is made great by a thorough scientific investigation. And that is what followed in the, the days after the original Voronezh sighting by the two boys. Now, on an October 7th, 1989, the Kamuna, the same, very same newspaper uh, that had printed the original article, uh, followed up on that article with a number, with a discussion of local observations of UFOs, um, and also with an interview with one professor, is it is Genrike Silanov? And he was a physicist from the Spectral Analysis Laboratory of the Voronezh Geophysical Institute and a member of the Section on the Study of Anomalous Phenomena of the Society for Radio Engineering, Electronics, and Communications. Jesus Christ, what a title. Wow. So I don't <laughs> think you could get any. If you wanted somebody uh, investigating UFO phenomenon, this is probably a guy that you would want. I was uh, like, did they have Travis Taylor come and collect some data? I don't know. Well, he wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't, they didn't this guy Eric, actually got some data. They didn't have Eric Bard there. <laughs> Eric, no Bard data. No dragon? No, no dragon. <laughs> Shame. Unfortunately, no dragon. If they had dragon, they would have got, got stuff. But. Yeah, they would have got it all. <laughs> all the data. Uh, so the article uh, mentioned uh, another at least three other landings by a, UFOs of a similar description of the one that had been seen in South Park. And the the earliest of those had actually been observed on September 21st, uh, you know, about six days before 
uh, at 8.30 p.m. Uh, by some boys, which are on Mendeleev Street. Now, this is the same same thing kind of happened. You had the sphere landed, two humanoids and their robot emerged from it and, you know, performed some type of operation or, or some kind of... Uh... Hey, guys, thanks for watching. I know it's annoying to watch these broken up in 10-minute segments, but here's the next one over here. Or if you want to watch the whole thing uncut and after hours, just click this link to our website and uh, give us a donation. You get full access to it on Patreon. Anyways, thanks, guys. Enjoy the next video.